We based our ethnography study on Gunvara, a small town in the southwest coast of Galway. By first impression, Gunvara conveyed a sense of passiveness which was difficult to interpret. The aged building facades, the low footfall on Main Street and the dreary weather conditions added to our uneasiness at finding a subject for our research. But as we dove a little deeper, we were able to find the true heartbeat of this quaint Irish town and what really makes Canvara come to life. Our route to Canvara proved to be an expedition in itself. The moment we exited the motorway was the moment we realised we had just crossed the border between urban and rural Ireland. Our surroundings were transformed from grey to green as we navigated our way through the narrow boreens. These narrow roads were beyond the scope of Google Maps and our arrival could only be attributed to reading the mossy green signs along the way. Few locals who appeared from behind closed doors seemed to hurry about their business as though eager not to linger in the silent streets. Ironically, the first sign of life we saw in the community stemmed from the mourning of the deceased. The rumble of an old engine could be heard as a funeral hearse rolled to a halt right near where we had parked and a weary undertaker took a peeling yet alarming road sign which read funeral in progress into the funeral home. The little signs of activity were few and far between as though the community had collectively exited the town upon our arrival. Moving through the narrow laneways we made our way from one end of the town to the other. As though we'd been transported back in time, thick netted curtains veiled the shop fronts which boasted old washing powder containers. It was difficult to determine whether the building was an antique shop or was simply refusing to update its shop front in an attempt to hold on to times past. As we reached the end of the town, the church tower loomed over us as though keeping watch on the town and its locals. A stereotypical, ominous presence mirrored across many small Irish towns. The door creaked as it was pushed open, and we were greeted with a handwritten note that read, Three o'clock mass, cancelled due to funeral. Upon leaving the church, we walked down Main Street, which was intermittently decorated with street art. The colourful images of cartoons heavily juxtaposed the energy of the town. We saw a very typical small Irish coastal town, where tourists stop off to take a deep breath of the wild Atlantic sea air and capture the picturesque views of Dungara Castle beyond the bay. As our research progressed, we began to assimilate with a number of the locals and we started to find life in Cavara. We found that its heartbeat stemmed from the intimacy of its community, a community that expresses itself through multicultural and creative endeavours, a community of mutual understandings and respect. There is something poetic about this small town that resonates with the people and ties them to each other. We spoke to Suzanne Orford who told us what it was about Canvara that struck a chord with the community. There's a lot of them to be this one, the music festival. Oh, there's a huge music sort of um, thing around Canberra, like Sharon Shannon, we play in the local pub regularly, and there's another fella, oh, Martin Green is it? He's another famous singer, he would come and play in the pubs, but it's it's usually just around the Quinu or the, uh, the Puffy Festival. Like, when we opened the shop, we wanted it to be more than a tourist shop, because we wanted to rely on the locals, but thankfully they did this Christmas, because at Christmas time it's, there's not a lot of tourists about, not many really. Most of the customers in the winter is locals, which is kind of nice. It was clear that the strong sense of community was evoked upon association with not only the place of Canberra, but the people within the community. The very essence of community relies on the communal work of the people who reside in the same place. Canberra would not run smoothly if its inhabitants stuck solely to themselves, if the shopkeeper didn't open daily, or if the farmer didn't take care of the surrounding land. While intimacy among neighbours may not be visually present, as we observed, the sense of togetherness and sense of helping one another is not lost in the community of Canberra. There was something poetic in the great number of villagers that had turned out to line the streets for the deceased. 
a show of solidarity for someone who had passed on, one of their own, someone who had placed in the community of Canberra. The villagers had noticed that we were not from the community. We were almost disrupting the collective sense of loss. Yet it was apparent some of the inhabitants of this cosy Galway village were not Irish born, yet were an essential piece in the web of the community of Canberra. This led us to wonder what about Canberra had resonated with these people from far off countries to this place, enticed them to set down their roots here and manage to blend seamlessly into the community. Such a move had to be the result of a profound experience when visiting Canberra for the first time. The woman working in the Visual Arts Centre spoke of residents of Dutch, Russian, German and Belgian origin who found Canberra resonated with them on a personal level, so much so that they now lived in the village. How did this happen? Musicians and artists from European countries across the sea reside in Canberra, a community rich with artistry and song. Perhaps upon meeting kindred spirits in the village, musicians and those who express themselves through art, those who were once tourists, felt a sense of attachment to the place. Creative individuals are drawn to each other. They share ideologies of conscious values and beliefs about how humans should relate to physical spaces. We spoke to Jack Roberts, a British man who works in the craft shop and gallery alongside the harbour. Because these are little family-run shops, you know. I mean, it would be part of the family enterprise, uh, the family that lived here. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the sons that was born here came in one day and talked about it. And he said there was all shops, you know, so there were like guys on the boats coming in and buying stuff and farmers buying stuff. Yes. But I suppose it's like the creameries or anything else, you know, that was a whole different world. But I remember how Ireland was in the 70s, you yeah. know, I, I from Cork really, you know. And, uh, you know, I, I was born in England, but kind of, you know, my dad's like from Cork, and I ended up coming to Ireland yeah. in the 70s. And it was all horses and carts going down the creamery, you know. The lady working in Canvary Area of Visual Arts had somehow found her way from Britain to Canberra and rooted herself there, weaving her way into the tapestry of the community. The Dutch woman we encountered, she spoke of Canberra with a warm tone in her voice. The first place she told us to explore was the community centre. A community centre speaks of the gathering place at which residents of Canberra come together. A community centre is a place where thoughts are shared, bonds are created and decisions are made to nurture Canberra. It was a common occurrence that those we spoke to who resided in Canberra spoke of the community centre as an essential stopping point. The three women we spoke to, the worker in Cava, the Dutch woman who happened upon that conversation, and the woman running the craft shop, made a point of mentioning the Canberra community centre. It seemed like a place of importance. People, in this case the Canberra community, became connected to the centre by means of processes through which meanings are collectively shared, created and maintained. There are many things that bring the community of Canberra together. Their passion for music and art and crafts come to the forefront at several festivals, the most prominent of which is the Crinia de Maud, which takes place in August every year. Suzanne spoke passionately to us about the importance of the Crinia on the community of Canberra. We actually opened, me and two friends. We opened the shop at verylastminute.com at the Acrinia last year, it was absolutely brilliant. There was just, we had a massive party in the shop. Uh, there was, you couldn't move in the shop. We had singers, Spanish singers coming through. There was a great atmosphere. It was really good fun and it was absolutely chocker. Yeah, there would be a lot of people out sailing and sailing gear and um, especially during the Acrinia. It's lovely, like the Acrinia yeah. is beautiful. I've got an old caravan, a vintage caravan. And before we had the shop, and as part of that shop, I used to trade from the caravan because there'd be all sorts of camper vans right around the front and a few market stalls and stuff and it's just the crinny is lovely because all the when all the boats come in and the red sails and it's just really lovely. The importance of the crinny goes beyond its music and arts festivities. It is a festival that celebrates the history of their sailing culture. It is a way of remembering the history that made Canberra a staple town in the western coastline. Jack spoke to us about the historical importance of the festival. And then we got the um uh, uh, the Crinamod in uh, August, hmm. which is the uh, the uh, hooker festival, otherwise known, but we don't like calling it because Americans get confused. 
But uh, that's about the, the Galway, uh, the Aran Islands, the Galway hookers, you know. It's a traditional um, festival at the end of the year that really goes back because it goes back to the time when this was the, the a major place for uh, loading up peat turf and taking it out to the islands because the islands had no turf. If you look over there along the quays there, that earth's already black because it's actually turf. And this would all be stacks of turf in the old place. And, um, and it's still, they revived it. It's only been revived in the last 30 years, this uh, hooker festival. Because all the hookers went out of use. So they, you know, but people, uh, you know, enthusiasts kept them going. Like, you know. mm. But uh, that's what it's all about, is it? It doesn't look like a seaport now. It's sort of like a little quiet harbour, but I'm really busy in the old days. Yeah. The Crinu represents all of the present and past strengths that form Kinvara's identity. It is a means of revitalising their heritage, reenacting the buzz of the traditional marketplace and celebrating the contemporary music and art and crafts culture. The Crinu the Mod Festival validates their identity as being much more than just a pit stop between the Cliffs of Moher and Galway. The lady we spoke to in the secret garden craft shop told us that she herself was not a local, but was from a neighbouring village. It was moving to see how passionate this woman was about Kinvara. She had rooted herself in Kinvara and had a strong sense of attachment, identification and involvement in the community. Where once she was an outsider, she became an insider in the community through interacting with the locals and through the collective love for expressing oneself through creating works of art. The more an individual set down roots within a community by means of participating with the locals, engaging in emotive practices within the place, the bigger the attachment they gain to the place. The Secret Garden Shop is founded on a cooperative community who mutually benefit from the buying and selling of art made locally in the area. The social perspective of the community suggests that community and place could possibly become intertwined People could use their perception of community as a frame of reference when describing their attachment to place. It was through this conversation that we discovered that Kinvara was not in fact a fading ghost town, but a secret garden of its own, in which music, art and a deep love of natural landscape was flourishing. This woman belongs to the creative community who came together due to the shop setting up in Kinvara. The sharing mentality of the shop gathered a group of artistic individuals who strive to help each other collaborate and have an emphasis on sustainability and sourcing locally. Kinvara as a place facilitated this coming together of creative people. Our conversation with her provided insight not only into how people feel about the community but also what they do in the community, how they engage visitors and each other and the surrounding natural resources. Like so many residents who originated elsewhere, but have blended into Canvara's ever-growing bountiful tapestry of community. This woman has weaved her way into the community. She is part of the strong web that ties Canvara together. She is part of the community that gathers as a result of collective passion to see Canvara thrive. By intertwining oneself so strongly into the activities of Canvara alludes to a sense of rootedness, a strong connection to that place. It is not only through simply working or living in the village that these people have found a sense of place in Canvara. It's through moving within the place, interacting not only with the people within the village, but also engaging with the place. Walking through the winding street, taking in great deep breaths of sea air and attending the funerals of the village's dead. People rarely experience places from a static point of view and hence the meanings generated are not those of one viewpoint or sensation. Certain actions people make, such as coming together to create works of art or lining the village streets to pay respects. As we travel through a landscape, we see it and feel it in many different ways, and it is through this means that a place becomes an intrinsic part of our identities. All of the people who make their way to Canberra year after year for the Crinu, the artists who congregate to display their work, or the fishermen that frequent these parts, they all have a sense of attachment to Canberra. Whether they visit once a year to visit their favourite chipper, or fish in the same spot day in day out, the little coastal village resonates with them. Kinvera is a gathering place for those who express themselves through paint and words, those who live their lives through song, and those who speak the language of the sea. Kinvara is a place of community. <laughs>